it's storm season in the Philippines. And when it's storm season, they say, don't talk about storms because they will come. So before talking about storms, I talk about other things first. I had a colleague, classmate, who was Korean, studying anthropology, and he moved in with his family, his wife, his kids, and he still found it difficult because instruction was in English, so he always carried a big Korean English dictionary, and aside from that, he got me as a tutor. There was no payment except for Korean dinner, and I liked it, of course. Korean dinner. Before OPA became very popular, I was already having Korean dinners and interacting with Koreans. He was a Methodist. And so one time, he, he was also curious about Catholics. He made a deal. He knew I was studying for the priesthood. He said, why, is it, why don't we go to church one Sunday? In the morning, you can attend our worship because it's very beautiful. And in the afternoon, I will attend your worship. So I said, yes, it's a deal. And before that, he oriented me to the most beautiful part of the worship service when the congregation sings together the beautiful song, he will play on the piano. I was thinking, so what beautiful things should I describe about our own service, our own mass? So I told him, just wait for communion, just sit down there, look at us. So I went to the worship service, and I memorized, kind of, but I still wrote it, the beautiful song that they sang. He was on piano, the congregation stood up, and they sang. You want me to sing it? Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when they were singing this song and he was on the piano, I noticed not only he was singing, he was crying. And the song and the lyrics would continue, when through the woods and forest glades I wander, and I hear the birds sing sweetly in the trees. When I look down from lofty mountain grandeur, and hear the brook and feel the gentle breeze. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. This music, this song, this poetry, arouses in us a sense of beauty and a sense of grandeur of God's creation. 
a powerful sense of immensity. That is why I would not wonder the, the, the person who was playing the music on the piano and the congregation singing were even crying. So just to end that little story, in the afternoon, we went to Mass. And at communion time, our choir, our choir is called Tiples de Santo Domingo. Tiples are kids, boys. You see, they say that the best voice, the best voices of, of humanity, for that matter, they are found in boys like seven years old up to 10, up to 12, up to most, when they have not yet become men who have men's voices. So their, their voices are like the voices of, yeah, maybe you, you imagine angels. And on communion time, they sang Panis Angelicus. St. Thomas' poem and prayer for the Eucharist. Since he could not receive communion, I instructed him to just sit down, look at us, listen to the choir. When I got up for communion, I looked at him. He was again crying. So you cried in the morning, you cried in the afternoon. And after the Mass, I asked him, you were crying. Did you understand the song? It's in Latin. He said, I did not understand a single word. But it's so beautiful. And not only that, he even found beauty in the offertory. Some, sometimes for us, offertory to young biasa. People walking, people offering gifts. The priest receiving and incensing. So there was beauty at the gift giving after all. There was beauty at the incense. And there was beauty connected to that at the offering on the altar. It's so beautiful. And then capped by the communion song when we were receiving. We gave. And he clearly saw we were receiving. That was beautiful. All these experiences from an experience of nature to birds singing, to the forest, to the sea, to the winds, even to the storms. We experience the power and the immensity of God. A French poet summarizes all this in a poem, Rani Rilke, and he says, Le monde est grand, mais en nous, il est profond comme la mer. The world is large, but in us, it is deep as the sea. That is why when the disciples took Jesus on a boat, they were at sea. The world was large. Not too large anyway. It was just a lake. But at the middle of the lake, there came the squall, the sudden storm. Pilgrims who go to the Holy Land would experience this. When you go to Lake Galilee, you go to the sea, 
You go to the lake, and at the middle of the lake, the noisy engine of the boat is stopped. And suddenly, you hear the waves. And suddenly, you feel the breeze. Don't sing. There might be a storm. But then, you begin to experience the profound power of God in the experience of the disciples. But more than this, the lesson of the second reading allows us to even look beyond an experience of the beauty of nature in the beauty of a poem or in the beauty of songs or even in the beauty of rituals that we do. And what is that? In the second reading, St. Paul, in his letter to the Corinthians, even more wonderfully summarizes this experience of immensity, of the grandeur of the Lord. We are told in the second reading, whoever is in Christ is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. The metaphor of the storm, the metaphor of the beauty of creation inspires us, inspires us to faith, in fact. It is in the Christian liturgies. It is in our Catholic liturgies as well. But more than that, more than the beauty of nature and the inspiration that we derive from it, that it flows into our worship, Paul reminds us, whoever is in Christ is a new creation. The old world has passed away. Behold, everything is new. If we take Paul to heart, if we take the mysticism of Paul to heart, then we look at ourselves. Then we look at our relationship to Christ. This makes us a new creation, even higher, even more profound, even more immense than the creation of God. And that is why Paul could only end saying, Behold, behold, everything is new. My brothers and sisters, as we are brought together as a community to reflect not only on the beauty or the profundity of nature, but on the reality that we are a new creation. Behold ourselves. Behold who we are. Every day, every moment, we are made new in Christ. This is the higher power of God. Not only the power to stop a storm, he has the power to change your heart. He has the power to make us the new creation. As we come to the Lord in the Eucharist, let us thank Him for the beauty of the world He has created for us. But more, moreover, as we are told that even that world is passing away. Let us then approach the Lord with renewed thankfulness and gratitude. 
Because not only He has created the world for us, He has recreated us anew in Christ. And with this realization and with this truth, let us share the beauty of that world. Let us share the beauty of this faith that God has formed us anew in Christ.